Don't mind the hat there. <sighs> so just beyond my family's farm, they say you can see the curvature of the earth. The red plains seem to stretch out forever. On the hot summer days, willy willies, also known as dust devils, dance across the horizon. When the rains do eventually come, dazzling electrical storms light up the night sky, and thousands of desert acres are submerged under life bringing water. To the untrained eye, the expanse of interior might look deserted and lifeless, but this is where farmers like my family raise livestock, nurtured from the land and in turn, nourishing you. And for those who have witnessed the migration of a thousand emerald budgies, who have seen the snowfields of white paper daisies, or heard the groans of the river red gums when the ephemeral creeks start to flow, it is undeniable that this land breathes and evolves as the seasons change. But this ecosystem is fragile, an eggshell of interdependent and symbiotic relationships. And the combined challenges of feeding a growing global population, ecosystem degradation, and climate change ask more of farmers than ever before. And so the protection of these delicate environments rural communities, and food production systems is paramount. And I believe sustainable farming is key in ensuring a vibrant and resilient future for all of us. And that means a food system without fragmentation, and one that we all take care of. And by now, I'm sure some of you are sitting back thinking, cool, Farmers, I'm not a farmer, bring on the next speaker. Well, I want to challenge your responsibility because each and every one of us plays a role in the food system. And the choices you make when you eat do impact me. And here's why. You might have heard the term planetary boundaries. These are the land, ocean, atmosphere, and biodiversity parameters that define a safe operating space for humanity. And like the naughty kid on the playground, we've tested pushing those boundaries of our loving Mother Earth. You know, we wondered what it would be like if we cooked the planet a little and killed off a few species here and there. Well, we now know that wasn't appropriate behavior, and we're kind of being reprimanded for it. These are some of the big predicaments we now find ourselves in. By this time tomorrow, there will be nearly a quarter of a million new mouths to feed. Great if you own a restaurant. Not so great if you're the food producer, tasked with growing more meat patties and quinoa. And I say it's not great for the farmer because the world is currently losing productive land. Arable land, pastures and forests are disappearing. And at a rate that far outpaces the Earth's natural ability to replenish such diminished areas. Now let's throw climate change onto the farmer's plate, who are already trying to produce more with less. Floods bushfires and altered rainfall patterns are pretty bad for farmers, particularly those who walk the tightrope of life in the developing nations. When I'm not at home in dusty sheepyards, I spend a lot of my time in the lush rice paddies of Southeast Asia. As well as being a farmer, I am also an agricultural researcher 
Because as land managers, we know we need to continually seek new information, a better understanding of how our world works and the human interaction with it. And my research takes me to places much poorer than here. It shocks me when these farmers that I work with in Southeast Asia tell me the number of days that the dry season is extending each year. When they describe to me the insects that they see eating their crops that they had never seen before, they know exactly how their climate and their world is changing. And although there is a tempting self-delusion that hunger, plagues, and forced migration are fears for lesser mortals, let's be clear, climate change is an ugly beast. It impacts farmers around the globe as they work closest to the land. It is impacting them now. And what affects food producers affects you in the audience who are hanging out for a kebab after the show. But if farmers have the skills, the knowledge, and support structures in place, they can do amazing things. And using a food analogy here, with the right ingredients, farmers hold the key to healthy environments that produce nourishing food and support prosperous and vibrant communities. And it's you guys who choose those ingredients. You equip farmers with the capacity to make change and to do what they do best. And that begins by understanding the farming story and how you play a role within it. Farmers are the custodians to a lot of land. They manage the basic building block of life, the soil. And when it is managed properly, we reduce salinity, erosion, and enhance it as a carbon store. Farmers play a pivotal role in nitrogen and phosphorus flow. The improved fertilizer use efficiency and the capture and return of nutrients to the soil not only leads to healthier soils, but a healthier coastline and a healthier atmosphere. And on this land, farmers live and work alongside plants and animals. Agriculture supports and is supported by these living creatures, the pollinators that ensure our harvests, the mosaic of pastures that hold down our soils, the trees that provide wildlife habitats. And this life is dependent on high quality rivers and aquifers to sustain it. Water management on farm and beyond the farm boundary fence is key to proper ecosystem functioning. And with such precious assets at stake, we need to adopt an attitude of shared responsibility, taking only what one needs and no more. And this goes for our food as well. Farmers can help us respect our food by educating us on the time and resources that go into producing it. With their help, we can reduce food loss and wastage and banish ridiculous cosmetic standards like the perfect red apple. Farmers have long fed and clothed the world, and I think it's time we help power it as well. They own parcels of land that can host solar panels and wind turbines. They produce biomass that can be used not only to run their businesses, but provide them with a secondary and stable source of income by putting that renewable energy back into the grid. Strong farming businesses mean wider social stability. Building resilience into rural communities generates employment, markets and services. And as our society progresses, Strategies and policies that promote businesses closely attuned to the natural world means a stronger economy for you and me. 
And whichever angle I look at tackling these big challenges of feeding a hungrier world with reduced environmental footprint, it keeps coming back to farmers. The role they play in looking after the soils, the water, our economy and communities. And in turn, the support and capacity that we as a wider society give our farmers to do that. My family purchased our Outback Sheep Station in the year 2000, the start of the decade-long millennium drought. A word for the wise, not the best time to buy a farm. It was immediately apparent to us how interconnected different components of the farming system are. As we all know, when the rain doesn't fall, less vegetation grows. Livestock are sold at reduced weights and crop yields are not achieved. Less money in the farmer's pocket means they search for off-farm employment and shops in rural towns close. For you, food quality goes down and prices go up. Knowing that this region that I hold so dear is becoming hotter and drier with more frequent and intense dust storms drives me to build resilience and sustainability into our farm model. Just like farmers all around the world who stand at the coalface of life's macro challenges. As an industry, we have achieved remarkable things. We have built a powerful foundation of wisdom and awe-inspiring technology. Our livestock have greater survival rates and are producing less methane. Soil sensors provide real-time data that we can immediately respond to. And drones are gathering aerial imagery of crop health, helping us to water better and control weeds more accurately. And this is happening in the paddocks today. In the future, sensors, automation, engineering and genetics will only be more impressive. And as we come to realize the urgency for this change, we will see a surge of inventiveness that will create solutions that are languishing in their infancy or even yet to be dreamed of. It is exciting to see new breeds, new management practices, new technologies revolutionizing the way farmers produce food, fiber, and energy. My vision of the future is where farms have long-range weather forecasting and advanced telecommunications so we can make well-informed decisions. They are businesses run on renewable energy and where no food is wasted unnecessarily. But I need you guys to help create that future. Because while finite resources are still being plundered, while our natural landscapes are still being polluted, while there is still fragmentation within our food system, we must realize there is no room for apathy. There is no luxury of time for complacency. I have no doubt that we can all live well now and into the future within the means of one planet but only if we are conscious of our shared responsibility and with knowledge that farmers are the link to the land, to our food and to vibrant and prosperous communities. Sure, the world is a complex place, but as I learned during the millennium drought, everything is connected. In fact, if you pull at a single thread of life, you will find it is attached to everything else. And because of this interconnectivity, you here today play a critical role. You drive the farmer's production by choosing what to eat. You manage the natural resources by deciding to finish your meal or to throw it out. 
your use of energy and the source of where that is generated from determines the pollution that is or is not put into our skies. And your vote sets the policies and the trajectory of our common future. In essence, it is your engagement with the farming story that shapes our industry and the world in which we live. Thank you. Thank you.